very good morning and <clears throat> a very happy new year to every one of you let's say today's topic this is a very heavy duty topic in fact we'll be covering lots of grounds and i hope you have revised all the previous sessions properly because see if you have revised it you'll you'll really enjoy this session because everything will fall in its place so properly that you will feel ki yes it is like a logic right one by one one by one you'll keep on learning more and more and by the end of today's session you'll be able to diagnose now is it so that this uh, say ecg is so easy that uh, will be completing every aspect of it within say next one and a half hour see honestly no it is impossible it's like we can keep on studying ecg for even one month what our purpose is to prepare a very proper ground so that's the reason that almost for 80% of today's time we'll be talking about how to approach towards the any of the ecg we'll keep on learning about even the electronics principle keep patience that as you keep on learning step by step one by one as you will be understanding it right this time i'll keep on telling you that okay this is the point which you just write down so it's like at times i might say that you just draw this much i might say that okay you just draw this much or i might say that you just draw one triangle ethon's triangle that's it that would be more than enough because it will keep on guiding you that how exactly you will be approaching for any of the ecg okay things are very simple but very systematic very scientific right and see chances of error will be minimum very few chances will be there just you have to follow the principle it is like mathematics right in mathematics you can never go wrong subject to you make blunder otherwise you will definitely be correct correct so with this let's start our today's topic right ecg or electrocardiogram now that's what we know so well but still it is important to revise it bit fast right so this was our sa node sinoatrial node so sinoatrial node was present in atrium correct to be precise right atrium so from right atrium in order to send impulses to left atrium there is bachmann's bundle so it means right atrium and left atrium they both would fire at the same time right because its conduction speed is high right we talked about it and then from sa node to av node right it will go via these internodal tracks and then from av node which is like this is our primary pacemaker this would be our secondary pacemaker and from av node it will go to bundle of his right and left bundle of his and then all the way to the purkinje fiber these are like plan a plan b plan c plan d that means in case if a fails so then b works b fails then c works c fails then these purkinje fibers work but the trouble is as they move as we move from a to b to c to d the firing speed will keep on decreasing correct one another interesting thing is its importance would be maybe at a later stage but it is worth remembering that when we say these are all pacemakers so here is a b c d you understand what is a b c d right a is sa node b is av node etc sa node av node bundle of his and purkinje fibers now this would be firing at the pace of about say 60 to 100 right this would be firing at a much lower pace say 40 to 60 and then slow 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 so here when this primary sa node is firing the moment it fires it resets everyone right do remember this 
द हायर पेस मेकर वेन ही फायर्स इट रिसेट्स ऑल द लोअर पेस मेकर्स इट मीन्स जस्ट फॉर द सेक ऑफ अंडरस्टैंडिंग राइट वॉट एग्जैक्टली दिस रीसेट इज दिस इज फॉर द सेक ऑफ अंडरस्टैंडिंग लेट से दिस अवर फर्स्ट पेस मेकर इज फायरिंग एट एवरी वन सेकेंड दिस इज एट एवरी टू सेकेंड दिस इज एट एवरी थ्री सेकेंड एंड दिस वन फोर्थ वन इज एट एवरी फोर्थ सेकेंड सो हियर वी स्टार्ट फर्स्ट वन फायर राइट सो ही रीच टू द टारगेट विद इन वन सेकेंड डन by that time this would be only at its half the distance this would be still less and this would be very less so when a fires right it would reset everyone it means everything zero and then everyone has to start from zero again so though this secondary pacemaker it reached halfway but it is not so that it will continue all the way till end no it won't right it would be reset so it's like everyone is passing right this is one this is two this is three this is four then the moment one touches the target thak everyone reset and everyone will once again start with zero so this is the reset principle right it is in fact an electronics principle and uh, in many of the circuits this type of system it is used but this is what is present into our heart okay another important concept we cannot see electric current right electric current it cannot be seen but we can see its effect so effect of current on muscle it is seen that we can see so this is one more reason that why it really happens that whenever there is myocardial infarction right whenever there is one of the chamber is enlarged and we see some changes because the current passing is the same but because this is the left ventricle and left ventricle from our anatomy knowledge we know that it has got thick musculature thick muscle right so in that case the amount of current which will be passing into that muscle will be much more as compared to relatively thin architecture of right ventricle right so that's the whole idea behind this system so do remember that we cannot see electric current what we are watching is its effect right so this is the second concept which we have to understand okay that's what you already know correct this is how myocytes work very quickly we said that we start with stage number 4 right why not we start with stage number 4 which was repolarization that means that over here because of those gap junctions small amount of calcium it is leaking into the cell right from the neighboring cell or from the pacemakers and when they come when they reach to a certain point and that's what is called as the threshold point there leads to the trigger of voltage sensitive sodium channels voltage sensitive sodium channel so there will be influx of sodium large amount of sodium enters into the cell and straight away cell becomes depolarized right it's now positive then over there sodium channels are closed and then voltage sensitive those at, because at that point voltage is plus 52 right it is in positive so potassium channels they would open and then large amount of potassium would start traveling out all right immediately because the positivity from inside the cell is dropping so it will start coming up coming down right the voltage will start coming down but then at that point calcium channels open right calcium channels open these calcium channels will lead to influx of calcium so calcium will come in now it happens at that point that the amount of calcium which is coming in and the amount of potassium which is leaving out they both are exactly same so that's the reason there would be a plateau there would be a plateau because electrically there is no change no doubt ions they are changing right calcium is coming in potassium is going out but 
electronically seeing, electrically seeing, charge remains same. So that's the reason we get plateau. And this piece of stage is very important because that gives us what's called as the contraction. And we are very interested in this part today because we'll be dealing with the complete electrical system. We'll be dealing with the electrical system that is ECG machine itself and the electrical system what is going on in the heart normal and abnormal both at this junction as soon as the plateau part is complete calcium channels stop sorry calcium channels they stop now calcium channels they stop potassium is still going out so again there would be a fall and this is the stage of relaxation and it goes down 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 right the calcium which was inside again by the iron pumps it is also pushed out and a stage comes when we are back on four that is repolarization this is a refractory phase there is a small refractory phase and then the pulse comes again and again it fires right so thus this system keeps on repeating itself now to this we add something extra right we add something extra and what's that deliberately i avoided this piece of information last time because it was necessary for you to understand this concept very clear four zero one two three right that is repolarization depolarization initial repolarization and then the full complete repolarization now see that is this contraction part the calcium which is entering the calcium which is entering from outside that is not sufficient it is less this calcium is quite less and this much calcium is no way sufficient to con to create a strong powerful myocyte action the muscle fiber of cardiac right cardiac tissue it is not that much enough so what we do this is phase 2 correct we are talking about phase 2 this is the phase 2 okay so just focus on phase 2 in phase 2 in phase 2 the first thing which happens is that that's okay v means now you know it so well voltage activated calcium channels open and that leads to influx now the cell uh, this cell is getting loaded with calcium now this small calcium when it actually comes into the cell in the cell there is sarcoplasmic reticulum right sarcoplasmic reticulum sarcoplasmic reticulum is what it is nothing in simple words it is the storage inherent in house storage of calcium so here is the cell and cell has got the sarcoplasmic reticulum and in sarcoplasmic reticulum it has stored large amount of calcium but this calcium is of no use it is like a money which has been put into locker and the key is lost right so it cannot be used those muscles they are waiting over here that come on give us calcium so that we can work but they need more calcium true so this calcium which came from outside this calcium actually triggers release of sarcoplasmic reticulum calcium so as soon as this calcium comes from outside it is like a key it opens up and all these calciums they are released and they come in contact with muscles and the muscles contract so this piece of information is what is called as cicr very nicely said calcium induced calcium release what we really want to say is that small amount of calcium will release large amount of calcium right like many of the aircrafts the small engine it works but it triggers the large engine and that's how the aircraft works same way over here the small amount right this is the small amount of calcium it induces a release of large amount of calcium right and once again the reverse process as soon as the calcium is taken out again that calcium it goes back into the sarcoplasmic reticulum and waits for the next turn so that's how the whole system works so we added this extra point today cicr just remember cicr calcium induced 
calcium release okay one more thing i was told that see during our entire discussion right because say today is the day 5th still five more days to go in which we'll be talking about pharmacology we'll be talking about congenital heart disease myocardial infarction even other ailments right everything will come so how you have to make notes try to make notes in the form of brain mapping brain mapping try to write down only the important keywords and the chances are very high that some of the points so i'll be writing in real time only in front of you so when i am writing you also write right otherwise understand the concept and i actually don't agree that when someone tells you chalo in 10 minutes learn ecg in 15 minutes you learn ecg no not possible not possible right it is impossible to do that so that's the reason i said this is a heavy duty topic because we'll be covering right from the foundation until you reach to the end otherwise it becomes like see there is never anything like shortcut so so don't fall into any of such trap yes i guarantee you if you follow step systematically you yourself will start telling you okay this is what the diagnosis is this is you'll be able to actually see that how the heart is behaving right it is that interesting okay next is that when we say ecg or electrocardiogram your ecg machine is not understanding what is right atrium what is left atrium what is right ventricle what is left ventricle ecg machine is not understanding it's like what is the iq of your computers it is zero yeah trust me iq of your computer is zero that computer works as per your iq if your intelligence is higher you know how to make use of it it will work that computer is nothing but it is your slave it has got nothing of its own same way ecg machine is not understanding anything what it is doing is it is so still amazing summation of all electrical activity summation remember this summation it means what that if there is a left ventricular hypertrophy right let's say this is the heart right and there is left ventricular hypertrophy so we just draw it like the symbolically ec machine is not understanding it'll say ke i'll display everything whatever the current is passing through right atrium left atrium left ventricle right ventricle everything and i'll just give you the final output it is you who has to decipher that what it is otherwise me you don't ask me i'll just display the total summation effect so this is is one of the important criteria when you'll be learning the diagnosis part what ecg leads are now you'll see that when you have to take ecg right you apply those straps on those right electrodes on both the arms both the legs and then there are electrodes which are kept on the chest they are called as leads or the electrodes technically electrodes so those electrodes will do what they'll just say that on right arm if the electrode is kept over here what current is coming and it would be displayed now that is technically called as the potential difference right potential difference it's called as potential difference potential difference means with respect to some current it is telling that how much current is right now passing through this particular piece or information how much current information of the current is passing through that particular point more as we talk about so ecg leads they are nothing but it is way of looking at heart from various angles right in order to understand the heart you have to look from various angles it is precisely like say whenever there is in cricket 
whenever there is doubt right for the run out so then there are multiple cameras they come into picture right from light right side left side this that all those angles and then frame by frame things are advanced and the decision is taken by the third empire whether he is out or not now what if if there is only one camera and and somehow empire came in between so now the decision would be very difficult same thing is over here in order to understand condition of the heart you have to actually watch the heart from different planes different levels right so that's what it is said that you will be watching heart from various angles in multiple planes actually in 3d yes right in ecg you watch the heart in real time in 3d yes you watch it in 3d so everything would be clear with all those simple lines right let's see the concept of the concept of current see current is coming and here is the electrode right here is the electrode only one principle what you have to understand that is if it is connected to the display if the current is coming there would be positive deflection positive deflection because current is coming towards you right and current to is coming like this only but now what if if you place electrode over here right or let's place the electrode over here so in that case if we connect one more display over here what would happen in this case in this case current is going away from the electrode true it is going away from the electrode so when it is going away from the electrode common sense tells that if it is coming towards so it is positive deflection so in this case it has to be negative deflection excellent so easy but let's complicate the matter a bit right as always right we make it bit complex and someone smart from you he placed the electrode right in the middle and then he said let me connect now tell me what should happen right in this case what should really happen right simple the recording starts and current is coming 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 towards the electrode excellent so it would be positive deflection correct and then this current is going away from the electrode so there would be negative deflection so easy that's how the entire ecg would be prepared bus you have to remember this that when the current is going away it is negative when the current is coming it is positive deflection fine okay so when we say that that's like a normal ecg well the names are given right it's like this first it is given as the name p then because when we write say q to we write it like this right so this lower lower wave it is q correct then this one is r this again next down wave is s and then there is t occasionally there is a u wave but we'll see later so this is these are the basic waves p q r s t now at this point say if the above concepts are clear that when the current is coming towards you is it, it is positive reflection and when it is going away away from you so it is negative deflection right that's the point of electrode that's the point of electrode and when we combine both of them that also you understand the second concept is the concept of vector 
see how closely things are associated see here is the starting point if you pull this stone you tie a string and you start pulling it on this side the stone will start moving in this direction correct simple but you attach one more string and you start pulling it into this direction now you are pulling that stone from both the directions right that's what you are doing you are pulling it over here and with the same strength you are pulling it even from this side right yes we know this is like y axis and this is x axis that's right right but we are pulling so actually in which direction the that stone would travel it would travel like this correct and this is what is called as the resultant vector resultant vector if this is clear you are ready for learning ecg right i hope till this point there is no confusion so you know the electrical system right electrical conduction of heart this thing should be known to you the principle what we learned over here that is the direction of the current when it is coming and going plus or minus and the third thing which you have to know is about the vector i hope in this much portion there is no confusion all good okay now we add some process to that right let's add how we really link ecg with the cardiac cycle so first thing first here is the point from where we start okay. <clears throat> here is our ac node this ac node fires as this ac node fires immediately the current right say for this point of time just feel like that this is the place where our electrode is that's the location of electrode that's the location of our electrode this one so everything we have to watch with that perspective right as if you are sitting over here right and then you are watching that from that point sa node fired so sa node as soon as it fires right it will go tak 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 right this is the right atrium which will be charged and immediately there is buckman's bundle so it will charge this left atrium also so they both are charged current goes right when the current is going it is going towards you you are sitting and watching from this point so that's p wave that's p wave right over here as it is going towards the going towards the electrode right so they contract and you get the p wave so over here here is the p wave that is atrial depolarization correct atrial depolarization you are what you are watching is as the current goes through all those musculature so those muscles when they are acting and that's what we are watching in its effect so next is between atria and ventricle between atria and ventricle during our understanding of anatomy we said that there is only one window right here is sa node but over here there is av node and av node is the only window through which the current can go from atria to ventricle otherwise rest of the things are fibrous they are insulators right they won't allow any passage of current if they pass so then it is an abnormality and there can be so many complications right they can be and like those ectopic foci etc but right now we'll simply say that it is the av node av node which is the only link between both of them now this av node is what av node is slow av node is slow 
why it is slow it is slow because of just remember it is because of slow calcium channels slow calcium channels why calcium channels because normally so it is the voltage operated sodium channels were opening true voltage operated sodium channels were opening so when voltage operated sodium channels were opening large amount of sodium was gushing in and then immediately you were getting the spike but over here that sodium is replaced by calcium so now instead of sodium the calcium is entering and it is a slow channel so that's why it is taking time that's the reason its firing rate is just 0.1 to 0.5 meters per second so it is actually slow working very slow so that is your av node it is very slow but advantage is why it has to slow down it has to slow down so that it can allow ventricles to fill up right am i clear right following it right because the current is on halt right and as such you cannot stop the current so it is slowed down it is slowed down so meantime this av node is watching ki, okay ventricles they are filling okay now i fire because ventricles are full so then with full loaded ventricles they will fire and they will send the blood into the body and the lungs true that phase is this this phase it is this phase when things are slowed down right it is the phase when the av is slowing down atrioventricular node is slowing down the system everything is slowing down so that filling is possible right so proper filling of filling of ventricles okay so now things are good and ventricles are loaded and here is through the bundle of his right and then there is a rush of all those impulses going all into the system and then ventricles they fire now because see ventricles they have got large amount of muscle mass as compared to atria right they have got definitely left has got more muscle mass right has got less muscle mass but still they have got much much more muscles as compared to which are a thin atria that's one of the reason that when we'll be discussing right this point would come again but because we are mentioned discussing i'm mentioning it that in case of atria you will always find it is like right atrial enlargement left atrial enlargement it means they become bigger now there is a difference between enlarged and hypertrophied because when you'll talk about right ventricular you'll not say right ventricular enlargement you'll always say right ventricular hypertrophy left ventricular hypertrophy right so there is a difference between say enlargement and hypertrophy hypertrophy means when actually the muscles right the muscles they are now they have become bigger enlargement is just the size has become bigger but the chamber is thin it has thinned out so that's the reason remember atria they always enlarge and ventricles they become hypertrophy when you exercise your muscles are hypertrophied right they are loaded so over here this qrs complex this is what is called as qrs this qrs complex right that's why it is called as qrs complex it is what is representing ventricular depolarization because it is at this point now the ventricles they are coming into action okay so once again things continue and there is a phase of silence right here is the phase of silence ventricles they are contracting and then ventricles relax there is ventricular repolarization because otherwise how will it go into the next cycle true so first it goes into the depolarization and then it goes into the repolarization so ventricular depolarization ventricular repolarization perfectly fine where is so that ventricular repolarization is nothing but that t wave true that is the t wave 
here is the T wave and the cycle repeats. So this is at point P there is atrial depolarization so atrias they contract then QRS complex is where the ventricular depolarization right and then T is ventricular repolarization but where is atrial where is atrial repolarization that though we have never said where is atrial repolarization so this atrial repolarization is in fact you would agree that when we talk about atria and ventricle so ventricles they are very big very large very huge so obviously their current is also so high right we can see a marked difference see the difference between the current which is in p wave and it is in qrs complex right qrs is so high so there would be atrial repolarization but that atrial repolarization is here but qrs current is so high and that's where we said that our electrodes ECG is what is showing the summation effect. It is not showing the separate event. So atrial repolarization technically speaking is buried into the QRS complex because it is a chota sa current, it is a small current. So that small current it gets merged into large current of QRS because when the ventricles are depolarizing right heavy current is going and there the small piece of current of this atrial depolarization so atrial depolarization it will say okay, okay come and mix with us right you will not be given separate entity so that's the point that atrial atrial repolarization repolarization is merged in qrs complex fine so that's done right all good uh, why is there is a positive wave in repolarization okay see what happens is we are understanding that only only the current which is coming right the resultant current is seen only the resultant current it is not understanding whether that current is because of potassium or whether it is because of sodium whatever right it won't understand it is the current when it is coming right and the muscles contract but still in the repolarization also it is a sort of current right it is a sort of current which is like from all the way right it is all electrical activity only over here it is the baseline which is zero right it is baseline which is at the zero otherwise there is always a current so depending upon from how much muscle the current is going there would be a wave so when there is contraction when SNO is firing right when it comes it contracts and then in case of see see the amount of current when we say ventricular repolarization and ventricular depolarization here is the ventricular depolarization and this is ventricular repolarization see the amount of current right when the depolarization you will get this spike right when it is repolarization it is the small current right which is passing through it small current so that's why all the repolars they will always be of low current now one more interesting thing this is where you have to this you write it down right just write it down or you take a screenshot right? or whenever you revise right write this thing into your book this will make your understanding very easy because we won't be dealing with there are 12 leads right 12 leads or 12 electrodes right 12 electrodes we talked about it we won't be dealing with all the 12 electrodes together right actually in the final diagnosis the day you will become master you will be dealing with all of them together but at this point we'll be taking it step by step so divide it like this there are limb leads and then there are 
just leads. The biggest confusion it occurs is that when you really start taking ECG now, to your patient, you will say that actually you just apply three electrodes. Fourth to is dummy, right? So here is here is your your patient, right? And say right side, left side, and that is right arm, left arm, right leg, and left leg. And four electrodes are applied, right? They are color coded. So how to remember this? That is what colors they are. We, we said that when you drive your car, right? When you drive your car, accelerator is in your right foot correct right foot so that is right foot so make it green left foot that would be for brakes so brakes are red then we say that right right is positive positive means yes so white is positive so white over here so only thing which is left out is black so black over here these are just the color codes right? so to make it easy out of all these we will not be using this it is just for dummy it is just a dummy right it is just a grounded electrode we'll be using right arm left arm and the lower that is left leg Right. Only these three are used. But from these three electrodes, we'll be making one, two, three, four, five, six. Six readings. How are they done? Now there is absolute computer associated with it. There is a chip, right, which actually calculates and then it interpolates and everything is displayed. If we understand that, right, it is like if you really want to become a formula car racer and if you know your engine well, you will be master of driving. Same way over here, if you can really think that the way computer is generating all those, those graphs, your diagnosis would become much much easier and actually it will become like a mathematics. Just by looks at it and trust me after 15 minutes you will be able to just by look at the ECG you will say okay, okay this is a heart which is in normal position this is right axis deviation left axis deviation that effectively you will be able to say right regarding these chest leads V1, V2, V3, V4, V5, V6 right now we are not touching right we will come to that after some time though very important because it's like you are watching heart from a different plane so first let's understand limb leads now in this you must have noticed bipolar and unipolar right bipolar and unipolar what bipolar is in which there is a one side is positive and other side is negative positive and negative why is there gap between uh, between t and next p wave oh yeah there has to be gap now because that was the refractive time right that was the phase of ref refractory phase that was the refractory phase during which all those sodium potassium pumps they were working and everything they were putting back into the original state right over here right 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 where is it yeah over here this is the phase we are talking about this is the silent phase because over here over here that sodium potassium pumps are working ions, ions are working and they put everything back into their original state and then the next wave starts so this is the refractory phase refractory phase in which second impulse won't be effective and then as we go into the depth it is like absolute and relative refractory period this absolute means whatever the pulse you give it won't act second wave will not come and then relative means if the pulse is higher than stronger than the previous one it would come up right so that is refractory phase this is what re represents refractory so this is like your p wave then qrs complex and t wave and then now say atria 
depolarized ventriculars depolarized ventricular repolarized heart is coming back to normal now this is the diastole phase when the heart is dilating actually it is at this time when the atria they are filling up right the blood is coming but then all the heart muscles they are completely relaxed when the heart muscles are relaxed it is in fact the diastole phase right that is the consistent pressure on the heart which is like a diastolic blood pressure so that is what is happening over here as soon as this refractory phase is complete the second wave of those calcium they are coming from the gap junction and they are ready to fire for the second part and that's how the second wave would start right so that's how wave after wave but a phase in between because otherwise if the heart is contracting like this where atria would get the time to chalo come on fill up they won't get so heart actually beats like this 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 that's how it feels right so when it beats and then when it relaxes it is the time of the filling right so during that point it fills and then it moves okay so coming back to the point where we were <clears throat> so bipolar that means it has got plus and minus unipolar it means it has got just one pole right it has got just one positive point from where it will keep on measuring the current now how can it really do that nothing big the only thing is the way we have got a ground right the grounded substance so even in our day to day electricity there is a ground so that that plug right where over here that it is if it is not properly grounded to then all those heavy duty machines right air condition and refrigerator etc sometimes you feel that when we touch there is some current it is when they say grounding is not proper so that improper grounding so over here to we are using ac current alternate cycling current right but over here ecg is working purely on the dc current right because in our heart it is not so that current flip flops okay okay now the current which is which is getting measured in the heart it is very low our current voltage is like say 220 volts while when we talk about heart we are dealing with millivolt right millivolt it is so less right 1000 millivolt is 1 volt so 1000 millivolt is just 1 volt such a low current such a low current we are dealing with so in that case sometimes we cannot measure it with accuracy right it becomes difficult so what we do there is a system called augmentation augmented augmented means enhance enhance right that is what is called as augmentation so in enhance these leads a v r a v l a v f a v stands for augmented vector vector means the spike the current which you are getting that is called as the augmented that is called as the vector and augmented is okay, when other there are three points there are three points you combine these two points and with relative to these points you measure the current over here so they are considered as base and this is the measuring point measuring point right i'll give you one very simple example it's like this is 5 the value of this is 6 and this is 6.5 if you try to plot a graph then this graph becomes almost like a flat minor minor ups and downs will be there but if you say that will plot a graph of the difference so in that case how the graph would be that comparison between let's say this is a this is b and this is c so comparison between a and c is 1.5 so this 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 let's say this is 0.5 this is 1 and 1.5 so first point is coming over here and the second is 0.5 so we do have a very handsome graph right which can really be seen over here yes you can see it but the that that 
appreciation would be very minor here it would be very prominent this is what is called as the augmented augmented means relative to other electrodes so that will make big waves which can be seen very easily so this is why it is called as av augmented vector right okay now coming back to these bipolar 1 2 3 unipolar avr avl avf right so we have now we are coming up with our first electrodes now these electrodes are like just by looks at it you know it very well that now we are not using the right leg so though we were putting the electrode on right leg we are now not considering it because it is zero it is just to put over there here it is right arm left arm and left leg so this is a v r right a v l left and a v f foot so a v r a v l and a v f right one more thing put it like plus plus here plus plus this means this avf will always be plus true so coming up with the first part this is what we are dealing with here it is the current measured between right arm right arm and the left arm so that is the first one right so we draw it over here okay then so i'll mark this thing as minus this as plus then second is so this is done now the second is we are measuring the current between the right arm and the left foot so we go like this and we saw that this is minus and this is plus okay and the third one in which left arm and left foot so this is like this this is plus this is minus and we give the name the name which was given for the first one this was 1 this was 2 and this one is 3 right friends what you have drawn is is called as enthoven's triangle enthoven's triangle draw this right in your books just at a high speed just draw this it will be very useful so just draw it like this the easiest way right no need to write that this is foot because it has to be foot just write plus plus over here and minus minus over here so on the right side it is minus minus so obviously your this side it will become plus and minus your left arm and then this is 1 this is 2 and that's 3 okay fine let's move further this time we are talking about now you have to think we are dealing with resultant vector resultant vector it means that if from one point if one is pulling from here and second is pulling from here to in which direction the movement would be that is what is called as the resultant vector if you have understood this it is the most difficult part is over that is resultant vector right how come just focus forget everything just focus only on this part right don't watch any of the other image just watch this here that's the point okay now if i put if i put two vectors right you have you know that that we have just put three electrodes on the our patient's body so whatever is to be done it has to be done only from those three electrodes true okay so in this case 
here is one electrode and here is this second electrode right and we are on the foot we are now measuring from the foot right this is the direction where we would like to watch so because we are positive over here we are positive over here right when we are positive when we are positive it means whatever the current which is coming towards the foot is what will watch getting it right the current which is coming towards the foot only that current would be watched but with respect to what with respect to rest of the two electrodes with respect to rest of the two electrodes so that's the reason that one angle is this second angle is this but the resultant is in between what we are getting over here same logic exactly the same logic this time we are standing we are on left arm and we are just measuring from the arm side we are watching the heart and what's happening this is one vector and this is the second vector right that's how they both are so resultant would be into the center so that's another one and same way say every time they are right from wherever you are measuring the current it is positive remember it is positive so we gave this first vector because it was augmented for foot so we gave it name avf this second one we gave avl because avl is this is left arm and this time third one we are measuring right we are measuring so that is avr that is right arm these two vectors they were working and resultant was in between so that's why just from three electrodes we prepared six readings right from three leads we prepared six readings see here it is now everything has been overlapped over each other but as such it is the same thing see first our enthoven's triangle all you do is right this this is 3 correct if i place 3 over here so what you are getting this is nothing but enthoven's triangle right this was the right arm this was left arm this was left leg so it is enthoven's triangle but to see the central connectivity or just to see that how everything is placed into axis we have placed it on one graph so every one is placed like from central point and this triangle this triangle was an isosceles triangle so every one is 60 degree so here it is this is one this is two this one is three right so between one and two so here is one here is two so in between this is what 60 degrees perfect and then then say this angle this angle that would also be 60 degree correct because if you if you take the whole thing and you place it over here right you place it over here so it would be 60 degree here also 60 degree so that's why it is 60 degree here also it would be 60 degree right and see the angles right they always make the angle like this 60 degree so that is also fine okay okay so this is 60 degree and then the resultant vectors so they were straight away they were straight away parallel so that's why say this was dead 90 degree right absolute 90 degree this was minus 30 and this is 50 or in other words if you draw a circle this 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 right so if you take it zero right and you draw it like this so over here this is at say 90 degree 
but this 360 that means they all are at the difference of 120 degrees correct so in that case this will become 210 degrees correct and say this would be another say 210 plus uh, so it would be say 330 degrees correct so because the angle between all three of them is 120 degrees 120 degrees because they are completely like, like those, that triangle was there so if you are drawing it like this like this like this so the difference is 120 degrees but so same principle see by just this figure tells you everything that that is how 30 degrees that is 120 degree difference is there now here how we are understanding it in a way that when it is 180 degree here so when we go back so it would be minus 30 degree correct this is 180 so then as you go back right over here so this will become minus 150 degrees so that over here it becomes minus 180 degrees so minus 180 or plus 180 is one and the same thing right from this side or that side so that's how the final images they came up that is lead number one that is at zero lead number two that is at 60 and lead number three that is at 120 the gap of 60 degrees that was easy then AVR, AVL and AVF they are at 90, 150, minus 150 and minus 30 so these are at this angle right just see this thing because it is possible that sometimes you feel that are so much of information but once you will be comfortable I will show you because it will keep on coming again and again right it will keep on coming so this thing will be after watching few ECGs it will be like a second nature just by looks at it you will be able to tell it right but yes because it is like a new language and you can't learn the new language straight away you have to first it put put your efforts and time into this but this figure this is the figure which will be used again and again for every concept it's especially for the axis deviation right now what it really means it really means just one simple part heart is here here is the heart this is the heart right that's the heart who is sitting over here and all these leads they are just watching the current which is going through the heart from various angles so see this avr avr this portion is positive right this portion is positive so that positive pole is watching that what current i am watching from this angle so it will watch the heart from the right side from the right side true avl and lead one AVL and lead one what they are doing they are watching from the left side true they are watching from the left side and then lead three lead two and AVF they are watching the inferior aspect inferior aspect of heart they are watching it from the lower side see how nicely just by putting those three electrodes now you are watching every, the, every side of the heart right? still one thing is left out but we will come to that but you can watch the heart from the right side you can watch the heart from the left side and you can watch the heart from inferior side because to evaluate the heart you have to watch it from all the sides just by the numbers just by the waves picture will start appearing in front of you right so that's why this is very vital concept and it happens it happens that sometimes if it is not clear right once or twice so you might have to repeat it few times but make it very powerful so that this concept is literally dug deep into your brain okay let's add something to this say you watch the heart from right side left side inferior side but what if, if I want to watch the heart from front, 
that's where those chest leads would come right so chest leads they are placed on the chest right v1 v2 v3 v4 v5 v6 right all of them so when you are watching v1 v2 v3 v4 v5 v6 they will go from anterior of the chest right it will start from the right side then left side and as it will go it will go till the axilla right this would be the lateral most lateral most but these leads they are placed directly on the chest right directly on the chest so when they are put directly on the chest it is like if this is x x this is this is y axis this is x axis so then the axis which is which is like passing between me and you directly like this right this this axis is the z axis right so that would be like a z axis this is a, this is y i'm sorry this is y this is x and that's the z axis so over here in chest leads chest leads you are watching the heart from those z axis right so v1 v2 they are av septum atrioventricular septum then v3 v4 so they are directly you are watching just directly as if it is the anterior view right so that makes logical and v5 and v6 they are lateral so thus now you are watching the heart from all the sides you are watching the heart from the left side i'm sorry from the from the right side by that avr right you are watching the heart from the left side by avl and lead 1 you are watching the heart from the inferior aspect by lead 2 lead 3 and avf now this avf is absolutely in the center so it is giving you a very precise thing that's what now will watch okay this is right at a later stage right this is what is called as the cabera system nothing but overlapping of everything everything has been overlapped avr avl avf 1 2 3 and i'll spend just 1 minute on it lead 1 whenever there is up arrow that means it is the plus point that means from there we are watching right that is the recording point so this is 1 so 1 is done 2 here it is 2 right so that is 2 3 yes this is 3 this is plus so then the same line can be extended further so this is how the entire line is extended so that's okay right then coming on to coming on to avr avl avf so av r c avr because we are putting it on the right arm so that's the point from where we are really watching we are reading right we are watching the heart our heart is over here right heart is over here so we are watching it from the right side so that was avr then avl right avl here is the avl yeah makes sense because this is this is what left arm so this is also good right and finally foot so it has to be down so here it is the foot so that is positive right angles all of them right say this is 60 degree perfect this is 120 degree absolutely and this one so this is 1 2 so they are done this is 0 degree yeah that is fine and then avf avl and avr as discussed they are spaced at the distance of 120 degree this collectively whole system is called as the cabera system or the hexa hexa axial system or the hexa axial reference system see how beautifully we'll start now using it right here comes how normally the ecg would be given to you and don't worry because it is say almost impossible to complete the entire ecg part in one session right my purpose is that you should understand every step properly so no worries tomorrow we can have second session of ecg no problems right and as i said earlier that in case if it is necessary it is not hard and fast that yes will finish everything on the day 10 no if needed we can extend it on one day or two day no worries but you should understand it this is how the normal normal ecg would be would be printed and it will be given to you that yes doctor just see this is my ecg how it will look like 
normally it is like a complete strip but then it is cut and it is pasted right on the ECG report card and here is how it looks like. So this is the normal pattern and you'll see that this pattern is followed everywhere all the examples which we'll see. So here it is 1, 2, 3 AVR, AVL, AVF and then V1 to V6. Remember it like a poem 1, 2, 3 AVR, AVL, AVF V1, V2, V3, V4, V5, V6. Again matter of habit because everywhere it would be pasted like this. So first thing the moment you will say that Achha, I want to see that what would be the axis of the heart instantly your eyes would fall on this and this you will say okay this is plus this is plus heart is not rotated means within seconds you will say that okay heart is not normal you will say this heart is left rotated right rotated and from the condition you will say that this patient is is having right ventricular hypertrophy or left ventricular hypertrophy means it's like within 10 seconds so you will start speaking as if that ECG is talking to you right so this is one very important very important figure right it's not so that you have to cram it but when you will see the examples just keep this thing in mind and this will be part of yours these are the chest leads right these are the chest leads these are the bipolar leads and these are the unipolar leads right makes sense right bipolar and the unipolar leads 1 2 3 AVR AVL AVF and V1 to V6 now to this we have added you can do it like say when when you want to practice Right, just write 1, 2, 3, AVR, AVL, AV, V1, V2, V3, V4, V5, V6. And then try to fill up the spaces. Say for example, here we have written. So then A, 1. 1 was where? Well, 1 was on the left side. Right? It was at what angle? It was at 0 degree. So it will watch what? It will watch from the left lateral side. Perfect. Perfect. Then 2. 2 was where? 2 was down right two was down three was also down they were both like this right so they will be watching what they will be inferior aspect of the heart then avr avr to is exclusive right only one who is on the right side Chalo, that is done then avl avl where it is attached avl l is left left arm so it will watch from the lateral side yes true avf is dead center absolute avf because it is foot so this is inferior See, it is making sense. And then from V1, V2, V3, V4, V5, V6, we saw that V1 and V2, right, they were septal. Then V3, V4, so they are dead front, so anterior. And V5, V6, once again, they become lateral, so they are on the lateral side. So this gives the idea that if we find any specific reading, so then that belongs to which side of the heart? This is what it will tell, right? Okay, let's see further. Here is the first look how the ECG would look like, right? Say if I remove this thing one, two, three, AVR, AVL, AVF, V1, V2, V3, V4, V5, V6. Yes, it's making sense, and in all of them. In all of them, some normal findings are to be seen. And these normal findings are, right, we have to, you keep on watching and you will be able to remember. Say in lead 2, in lead 2, and V3, V4, and V5, exceptionally, you will find that this QRS complex, right, see the QRS complex. Right? They are all so big, so big. Then if it happens like this, this is normal. This is good. Why it has to be good? See, what was V3 and V4? It was watching what? It was watching anterior of the heart. Right? So if you are watching exactly anterior of the heart and the current is coming absolutely towards you, so it will be giving a big wave. That's why you are getting 
the QRS complex so big because QRS complex is representing what? It is representing ventricles, right? It is representing ventricular depolarization. So large amount of current is coming towards you. So it will be give a big wave, right? Because it is absolutely in front. Then when you go V5, so V5 is now becoming bit lateral. So the current would be coming, but it will be relatively less. V6 though, it will be still less. So watch. V5 and V6, see the QRS complex is declining. Similarly, V1, V2, the complexes, they are very small, right? V1 is small. From V2, it starts becoming bigger because V1 was on the right side, then V2. So for right side, so if, the right, if the current is coming like this, for right side, so it is the reverse way, right? Because it is measuring from other, other angle, right? Current is going here and it is measuring from here, so it becomes negative. That's the key point. V3, V4 absolutely in front of you. So it is big. Same reason this for this 2 and 3, right? Because 2 and 3, they were like lower, right? So they also watch it in front. So this is 1. Tall QRS in 2, V3, V4, V5. And AVR is reverse of 2. It has to be. Why? See? That's that's two that's two right and almost reverse is avr right not very precisely but almost but one is on this side one is on this side they both they both are uh, opposite to each other so if current is going like this you get a positive deflection here and if you are watching from here it will say current is going, right? So it would be a negative deflection over here. So easy, right? So that's how AVR, remember, is reverse of 2. Now if it is not happening like this, so then that means there is some trouble, right? But right now, we are not worrying about it. We are just looking at, first we are creating a normal picture. The way we understand anatomy first, then we see the modifications of it, that is pathology, and then we start entering into the treatment part. Okay. So, I hope till this point, everything is crisp clean. Now we are entering into, because I want to take you to a level today, so that tomorrow we can start exactly from that point for the diagnosis. Here is the ECG paper. Every component is so important. And I'll show you one example in case if this is missed, what happens, right? First, some fundamental thing. ECG paper is like this graph paper, right? It is simply like a graph paper. And, and if you watch carefully, there are all small, small, small squares, right? Five by five small squares, right? Five by five, okay? So this one big square, one big square, let me change the color. Yeah, one, now you can see it. One big square is five by five small squares. So five small squares here and five small squares here. True? So that's how those 25 squares, they are inside. Now the size is five millimeter. So this, this from here to here, this dark red line to dark, sorry dark red line it is 5 <coughs> millimeter so it means this is 5 by 5 millimeter if you have understood this bus you have known it properly so here it is okay here it is if i say that this is 5 mm this is another 5 mm this is third 5 mm, fourth 5 mm, and fifth 5 mm. So 5 plus 5 plus 5 plus 5 plus 5, that means it is 25 millimeter, correct? 25 millimeter or 2.5 centimeter, right? So this means 5 big boxes, 5 big boxes. In timeline, it is 1 second. Because when the paper moves, right, paper moves at the speed of, the speed at which paper moves is 25 millimeter per second. 
so in one second that paper would move 25 millimeter 25 millimeter 25 millimeter that's how it will go okay so that part is good one big box now these are five big boxes so one one two three four five so five big boxes in one second so one big box is right is one divided by right say this will be point two right so five into sorry five into zero point two is one true so every box would be zero point two second that is 200 millisecond because one second is 1000 millisecond so it means 200 200 200 200 200 done one second of journey completed now things are not ending it at this point there is one more thing this big box is having even small boxes inside so if this piece if this is moving in 200 milliseconds in what time frame this one box move so 200 divided by 5 so that means 40 milliseconds that would be the time needed to travel one small box so one small box is 40 millisecond which is 0 0.04 second that is because it is divided by 1000 right so 0 0.04 second so that's how these boxes move over here we are considering voltage that is on y axis y axis and on timeline this is the x axis so we talked about time in simple plain words strip moves at the speed of 25 mm per second right 25 millimeter per second now the voltage which we are measuring right these voltage they are in millivolt so here it is one volt one volt is thousand millivolt but because we are dealing with such delicate voltages thousand part of one volt such a delicate voltage so our paper is calibrated in such a way that one millivolt will be represented by two squares two big squares so that's the reason that when on this when things will move like this right will be able to measure that yes we can measure the distance we can measure the voltage this is low voltage activity this is a high voltage activity that's how it is seen because every spike is a voltage if it is a small spike it's a low voltage if there is a flat curve going on it means no activity is happening and that's why right in movies when they say okay, okay and in the climax something happens in, in that and then they say t right that line goes and then then there is some dialogue right and, and then that person comes back and suddenly right and and it starts with right uh, <laughs> those ecg waves and the funniest part is that in all those movies that when the heart stops and then it comes back it always comes with a superb sinus rhythm right as if nothing has happened so once you will understand all these things you will literally laugh in many of the movies that wow so amazing okay the importance of it one minute right in one minute that is there are 60 seconds in 60 seconds every second five big boxes are moving so total 300 big boxes would move in one minute so for heart rate what we will do 300 divided by number of big boxes between two consecutive waves right to be accurate wait right let's do it let's do it here it is what's the heart rate right what's the heart rate let's find out so we take one wave right right now let's say take this and here right let's take this wave here and here right now we are not worrying much about we just watch visually two waves they should look like and we take the difference so this is one box big box second big box this is third big box and fourth big box so four big boxes right four four big boxes they are there bit 
between two consecutive pulses means it is one pulse right it is one beat so our formula tells 300 divided by 4 and that comes to 75 beats per minute so nice so easy you know now let's go still further what about this right anyone right can you just calculate i'll help you and you can type your answers right and we do have very limited waves just one two three three waves so so let's take this qrs complex only right and from here and from here this was taken from a very healthy patient right absolutely fine so here is one and then this is the second box that's the third box four five six seven eight so here it is one two three four five six seven eight and this is almost right this is almost nine nine box just for the sake of our understanding nine boxes so this means this is like somewhat like 300 divided by 9 how much is it coming because if it is 10 so 30 and 8 so roughly around about 33 34 34 beats per minute correct that's what it is am i right 300 divided by big boxes so almost nine big boxes are there so one two three four five six seven eight and this also we are taking one nine right roughly it would be bit so 300 maybe 8.5 all right but still it will come round about 34 35 as i said that this is a completely normal patient completely normal patient now 34 beats is not normal friends nothing happened this patient is absolutely fine. The only trouble was that during calibration, someone made a mistake. And instead of the whole thing going at 25 millimeters per second, this trip was moving at the speed of 50 millimeters per second because there is a such control into the ECG machine. So someone made a mistake so now the pressure why is there a gap between T and next oh okay uh -huh. talk. so so the ecg machine ecg paper was running fast so that's why this entire thing was split across double double the time right so now when you multiply this will go like 68 70 beats per minute if you if it is in 25 mm right so that's the importance of calibration that's the importance of calibration so your calibration is so important that you really find it out it now see over here what would be the heart rate in this case so what we were telling that to be accurate right 300 big boxes 300 big boxes is equal to 1500 small boxes so if you want to be very accurate that what's the heart rate let's say in this case right we can make a rough assessment that between one wave right and the second wave let's say these are the three three big boxes right three big boxes so simply 300 divided by three so it is roughly 100 beats per minute but when we want to really go accurate so we'll say that no they are not say small boxes they are 14 right so in that case you divide 1500 by 14 so thus you will come up with the answer which is slightly more than 100 right it would be like 104 105 beats per minute so this will give a better accuracy right it will give better accuracy but for rough assessment 300 divided by big boxes that will be making your life bit easier because immediately you'll be able to say whether there is tachycardia or not that is heart is racing at a faster pace this is what is called as rhythm strip well very hmm. 
right? So that is 1500 divided by number of small boxes between two consecutive waves. That is when you want to be accurate. So over here, tachycardia, when you'll say that the heart is racing, when you find that it is more than 100. And when uh, is 25 millimeter per second universal? Exactly. This is universal. Whatever I told you in all the ECG machines of the world, it is universal. Right? Then you might ask a question that if it is universal, so then why there are settings of such say 50 mm per second etc. It is because that in some cases when the heart is going at a very high pace you really want it is like it's like during those investigation right when you really want to interrogate a person you put a camera you put a camera and then the question is asked he is getting shot with those high speed cameras which has got large number of high, its frame rate is very high and then when a question is asked and then when you do it go at a slow motion right at a slow motion you'll find that there was some movement in his hand or some movement in his eyes or some the minor shoulder movement was there that means that these are all called as the micro expressionism which is one of the very fine technique to figure out whether the person is lying or not right even with practice you can watch it with your own eyes but this is for the record purpose that is what is called as the slow motion so this is like slow motion of ecg Right? This is like slow motion of ECG. You are running the strip at a higher pace so that that entire beat is spread across large area so that you will be able to see every event very effectively to, and, and there is minimal overlap. Right, So that's the reason why it is there. So tachycardia means more than 100 beats per minute and the bradycardia slow down when it is less than 60 beats per minute. So that's how things go. Now what I feel is at this point because from this junction onwards right things will be going into the complete technical aspect that is from the diagnostic side. From here it is moving on to that right. So we can stop at this point and today all of you revise this thing very properly right. I am not telling that you have to cram, just understand it. And if not more, I would just say that, that those axes, right? Lead 1, lead 2, lead 3, AVR, AVL, AVF, just draw that thing, right? Draw that thing literally 10 times. Draw this thing 10 times. You will be happy with yourself tomorrow when we'll come to diagnose. Because the moment it is said that, okay, which lead is parallel to let's say lead 1 right lead 1 right which is at a perpendicular to lead 1 so immediately you will be able to say that okay it is AVF it has got importance that's where you will see that when I want to watch heart so I say, say in x-ray chest you watch it from PA view and then you have a lateral view right so that you can pinpoint that this particular substance is where exactly it is located because you are watching it from two angles here though you have got 12 angles but it should be fixed in your mind that what exactly am i doing so when you will be doing it draw this figure this kabera system right what we saw over there that kabera system draw it 10 times draw it 50 times still it is part of you and then see that how easy the rest of the diagnosis becomes right so tomorrow will not take that uh, congenital heart diseases right that will take afterwards tomorrow will take the second part of ecg and in the second part of ecg there would be full of examples because all the concepts which were to be learnt we have learned today right revise it properly learn it thoroughly and then tomorrow we meet again with the second part right thank you so much and see you tomorrow at 10 o'clock thank you and bye bye